thanks so much for being here and a big, big thank you to Monique and Iskander and Marcel and Dries and the whole team for making this happen. To me, this is fantastic, right? It's been five years of ThingsCon and I don't want to get all misty-eyed, but like I learned a ton. I met a bunch of really fun uh, and interesting people and um, I'm super happy to see that this keeps growing into like a really global community and we've been working together with the Dutch and the Belgian team uh, into, and we're all growing into one big core team and that is really amazing. Um, and I think after five years, it's a good moment to appreciate, you know, all the stuff that's been happening and to thank you and the team and everybody else. So that is awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm here today to talk about the Trust of Technology Mark, um, an initiative that we've been working on for the last year or so. And um, this is a thing that we came up with, with some support from Mozilla. They made me um, a fellow for the Mozilla Foundation for a year to help develop this. And as you know, things gone, you don't have to like, you know, read the small details. I'll share the, actually the presentation should already be on Twitter and the website. Um, as you know, we try to, you know, provide resources for people who build IoT products and how to make them better, make their life a little easier if they're trying to do the right thing. Um, we do this by, you know, providing some research and some reports and workshops and a space for exchange. But also we felt that at some point we should, you know, try out to give some more concrete tools and the trust mark is one of those. So why would we need such a thing? Why do we need a trust mark? Um, the end of things today is still a bit of a black box, really. Like most things you really, as a consumer, you have no way of going on of knowing what's going on under the hood. And we kind of need to open up those black boxes in order for, you know, be able to trust them. Um, a company just saying, oh, you know, we're cool, isn't quite enough if you have like sensors and, and big data centers enter your living rooms, your bedrooms, your kitchens, um, your body maybe. And so we figured, you know, consumers don't have the tools to do that. It's not an oversight. It's, it, you can't ask a consumer to try to understand the terms of services to the last detail or the technology behind it. There needs to be a simpler way. And, you know, trademarks or trust marks like the fair trade or the organic seal, they're all well-established methods to do that. And I think we essentially need to get to a point where, roughly speaking, we should be able for every device in our life to answer four rough questions. Does it do what I expect it to do? Like, if it's a toaster, does it toast my bread? If it doesn't, it's not working. So that's an easy one. Does it do anything I wouldn't expect? Like, I don't know, switch on and off the lights, or listen to me, or sell me ads, or, you know, bake ads into my bread? That's something I should know about. Um, hopefully it doesn't. If it does, at least, you know, should it, it should ask my consent beforehand. Um, and in order to, like, figure out how these things work and if they're trustworthy, we also need to know if the organization behind it is trustworthy. That's where it gets a little trickier because you can't automatically, automatically test for it, right? Usually, anything to do with IT security, you want to be able to test and to automate the testing, preferably. That's not doable on an organizational level. Um, but security and data practices are kind of defined by the trustworthiness of the organization and their processes. Like, you know, do they collect data they shouldn't be collecting? then that's a procedural problem. So is it made you know, using good processes? Is, are they trustworthy? Doesn't it, does it not surprise me with anything I wanted to do? And so we came up with like this kind of mission statement uh, that kind of sums it up, like the two sides of, the, of this trust mark. Um, the trust of the technology mark empowers consumers to make informed decisions, which right now they can't objectively. And also it shows the companies that already want to do the right thing to show and to prove that they are. Um, because right now, everybody can say my product is like 100% you know, fair and transparent and secure, but really, it doesn't really mean that much if you don't have a way to compare devices. And the companies that most blatantly lie would be the ones that benefit most if they just like self-label. So we figured out like um, a slightly better way, and I'm very, very happy to say that as of today, we're open for applications, so if you go to trustabletech.org slash apply, you can submit devices as of today. Yay! Um, so for me this is super exciting um, because it was like a long and fairly messy process to get there. We did like dozens of like, you know, test runs and prototyping sessions and iterations of, of our process. And um, I think we've come up with like a system that's robust enough that we can launch it publicly and then iterate from here. Um, I, I'm the project lead. I'm super happy that um, I just want to give, give credit to like three other parties. Jason Schultz, 
professor at NYU Law. He's the legal lead. He's been doing a lot of fantastic work in digital user rights. Um, he's the author of um, The End of Ownership, which deals with like, you know, digital rights in the um, digital content space. And in IoT, he works a lot with the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Um, he really had some fantastic ideas on how to make this happen. And also the whole branding comes from Pete Thomas, who was a professor at University of Dundee. Um, I'm super grateful to the both of them. And then also to the literally hundreds of people who gave input to this whole process in conversations and prototype typing sessions um, across the ThingsCon community. So there's a, there's a big, big thank you there as well. Um, now kind of go into like the, how the software is made too much, but there's a few things that are really important, I think, to know in order to kind of contextualize what we're trying to do here. Um, if you imagine, I need to like step away from the pyramid, but not outside the light at all. Um, if you imagine like a pyramid of all the connected devices there are now and maybe, you know, in potential in the next 10 years, there is a bunch of them that are really bad. Um, it's just, you know, if you've ever like really looked at this space, there's a bunch right here. And a baseline certification, like something that the European Commission is proposing, um, might weed out some of the really bad stuff there. Like that's like the CE mark in, you know, electric goods. It'll show you that the toaster oven is unlikely to burn down your house. And that's good. It's really important. But we think it's like not quite good enough. And so we wanted to instead have the trustable tech mark right here at the top, raising the bar, not from the bottom, but at the top. We want to elevate the debate and highlight the work of the companies that really do the right thing and that are exemplary in what they do um, and hope that they can elevate the whole field. Um, in order for this to be meaningful, I think we wanted to do two things. We wanted to make this really hard to earn, like you have to go through a pretty rigorous self-assessment and that's reviewed by our network um, and you know oftentimes producing data uh, producing IOT devices that are really not too data hungry and have good data practices and user rights built in is really hard or like harder than it would be to just like slap together a thing that just gobbles up all the data and shares it and sells it to everybody but once you've put in the hard work which some companies do then we wanted to make it to be really easy for them to apply this it's free Everything is openly licensed, um, and it's essentially a questionnaire that takes anywhere between like 20 minutes and a couple of hours to fill out, which is not nothing if you're like in startup mode, but it's very doable for our testing. So, you know, there's um, three steps, self-assessment, review, and the issue of a trust mark. Self-assessment is essentially a form. You fill it out. We ask um, about 50 questions. Um, companies fill it out. We review it, and um, then either we have uh, follow-up questions where we say, hey, there's something that looks a little weird, and then we'll see how the company replies to that and responds to that, and that's another data point. Um, if everything's good and cleared up, then we will issue the trust mark, which you know, is not, legally speaking, a certification. It's a, it's a license we give out for free um, for weird legal reasons that we don't have to get into. Um, and we look at five overall, we call them dimensions, like five indicators of, of trustworthiness, essentially. Um, privacy and data practices is one. Like, does it respect, you know, is it respectful of privacy and user rights? Um, transparency, is it obvious to users what the device does and how data might be, uh, might be used? Um, security, pretty self-explanatory. Stability, slightly odd name. What we mean here is how long of a life cycle can you expect of the device? Is the server infrastructure going to, like what happens if the company goes belly up or sells or is acquired or, or shuts down because it didn't find a business model or something? Like, is it still going to work? And good products will still be working and others will be, you know, a lot more prone to, to die along the way. And the fifth one we kind of see as an enabler is like openness. You know, is there open source hardware software involved, open data being used, open data being generated? And for every of these questions, we ask about 10 questions. Um, you know, four of these dimensions, security, transparency, stability, and privacy, I need to do a little dance here, um, are the ones we really require. Openness is really hard to enforce because of the way investments work and IP protection works. So we just essentially treat openness as a strong indicator of trustworthiness. The more open, the better, the more, you know, kind of benign we look at the application. Um, the more close, the more critical we are in the reviews. Um, 
sounds a little more complex than it is, it's really pretty straightforward um, process. Uh, and testing has been shown to be pretty robust as well. So essentially what we're building is the, the core, which is the self-assessment tool, the questionnaire that's been undergoing like you know, dozens of revisions over the last year, and then we also issue the, the trust mark itself. What we don't do, but really hope will spur into action and come into life is, you know, maybe commercial offerings or non-commercial offerings that help companies get ready, like experts you can call. Like we've been working a lot with um, the now called Better IoT um, community, before it was the Open IoT Mark, that Alexandra de Chassoncino put together, who might already be in the room or be here later. Um, they have a fantastic pool of experts, security experts and others that are more than happy to work with startups and who can help you get you ready with this stuff. We also publish all the results of the self-assessment once it's, once it's green-lighted and, and the issue is licensed. We publish the results and all the answers under an open license and we hope that third parties might you know, use that to build interesting um, things out of that data. We won't touch it, but we're super happy if, if someone else does and it's available under I think just uh, CC by as a license, but I need to double check. So we kind of hope that there's going to be an ecosystem emerging around this um, that, you know, will hopefully, you know, inspire some further research into trust and technology and, and also maybe policy. And the last parts especially I found really interesting because even though we just started publicly talking about the trust mark, but we hadn't even launched it, we got a lot of interest from policy and think tanks, some political foundations to see how the stress mark could inspire work in other areas like smart cities and smart city procurement. And that's, that's really interesting to see because there's a demand for these kind of you know, trust mechanisms um, beyond consumer, the consumer space. But the consumer space is what we'll focus on for now. And so I'm super happy to have a really nice list of um, launch partners in terms of you know, policy and think tanks and academia and some, some design practice places. And I'm just going to quickly show some of these. These will all be using the trust mark and studying the trust mark in their practice and contribute to it. And we're super excited and hope that this list will keep growing. Like the ITS in Rio uh, de Janeiro, it's like part of the network of centers, as is the uh, Istanbul Bilgi Information Technology and Law Institute, as is the Centrum Strifrove that I probably horribly mispronounced in Poland and the CIS Center for Internet Society in India. Um, the NYU Technology, Law and Policy Clinic as part of it, University of Dundee, Shenzhen Open Innovation Lab, uh, the Better IoT Community, and the Technical University of Dresden's Institute for Communication Science. Are just like nine of the launch partners we confirmed today. There's more coming in every day, and they'll all be studying what's happening here, and they'll all be contributing to the further development. And there's at least a couple more people in the room who are about to sign up too, but I don't want to like make it awkward for anyone until it's signed off. So. This is like a growing list and it's a really, really nice list, I think. Um, what's more, there's more academic interest um, in studying the effects of this and how to improve it. Um, so we're super happy to be part of an EU-funded um, PhD program that also accepts application as of yesterday, I believe, called OpenDot, together with uh, Mozilla and the University of Dundee and a whole bunch of other partners across the world, where there's going to be five paid PhD positions, um, and one of them specifically around the trust mark working directly with us. Um, so that's super exciting. And there's at least a couple more PhDs studying it independently. Um, but why would a company sign up for this, right? Because in the end, it depends on how many companies can and will use it uh, in the marketplace. And the short answer is, it provides a USP to demonstrate that your product is best in class. It's not just a well-performing product, but it's also a product that's, you know, that you can trust you know, to have in your life. And that's not nothing, that's really, Powerful, I think it's powerful uh, in terms of you know product market fit. It's also powerful in terms, I think, in recruiting talent uh, going forward. And so we've invited uh, just a handful of uh, companies up front to kind of do proof of concepts in interesting categories. Two of which I'm super happy we could like finalize on time. Um, and it's, they're really fascinating to me. Uh, I'm going to start with Vaikai because they were name-checked before in this Kandas presentation. Vaikai is a Berlin startup that does connect the toys. They're little wooden dolls that talk to each other. Um, they're beautiful and they've been around for a couple of years and they just don't collect any data. They just sidestep all the issues with connected toys that we otherwise see in the news every day and it's absolutely fantastic. 
And the other one is uh, SNPs, and 100% on-device AI and private by design voice AI platform, which can be embedded anywhere. And it's the same story. They made some really smart design decisions, um, and they're just fantastic, and we're going to hear about them uh, in a few minutes because we have SNPs uh, here today. And so just to wrap up, like, Today is the official launch day, launch day where we kind of like start accepting applications, but we're also looking to see how we can grow this beyond just a licensing uh, service, essentially, an unpaid uh, licensing service. Uh, we'd, we'd like to have more academic partners to like really see how this can inspire other research. We'd really like commercial partners to apply their own products. So if you have anyone or if you know of anyone who like should undergo this, please send them our way. Either just send them to, the, to the, the website, send them to me directly, happy to chat with anyone, and then we will see you know, how we can make this happen. I'd be really interested to see how design studios can integrate our work in their process to work with their clients, to give the clients a, a, a kind of head start. Um, I know that Dries, who's been name-checked like five times today, but I think is still in transit somewhere? Yeah, okay. Uh, he will be here eventually. And um, he's been working on some tools to make that easier, to integrate that in the, in, you know, the day-to-day -day design work. And also, of course, you know, nonprofit and media partners to see if they want to build like third-party like review sites or, or something, just come talk to us and we'll work something out. So again, applications are open to the public today. Um, I'd say thank you for now, and I would ask on stage now, Eric uh, Bezem.